All right, guys, I wanted to do a, a short video this morning about how to load a hex file onto a PIC. And I have in my hand a, a, a Picket 3, and this is the device that we're going to use to load the hex file onto the PIC. It's, it's going to be a, a pretty basic and straightforward video. So that's the picket three. Here's the, the little development board that is going to hold the pick while we load the file onto it. You can see the zip socket here and the uh, in circuit serial programming header right here. And we're going to take a look and see how to uh, insert the pick properly into the header and take a look at these uh, jumpers and show you how to figure out what the settings for the jumpers are going to be. Now if we flip this thing over you're going to see at the bottom here uh, dip 40, dip 28, uh, dip 8, 14, right dip 20 this is what you're going to need to to follow so we have a dip 40 is what we're going to use 40 pins so you can see J1 is supposed to be selected for A so we flip this over take a look here and here's J1 and if you look really closely here you can see it's already selected on A, right? So we flip back again. What's J2? J2 should be connected between 2 and 3. Turn it back over. We are between 2 and 3 already. Okay? Here's 1, 2, and the last one is 3. And one more time. J3 should also be connected between 2 and 3 and it is. I've already pulled the jumper off. I'll do it again just so you can kind of see in case you haven't done this before. This jumper slides right off right and put it back on 2 and 3 just jumping it out Okay, next thing we want to look at is this ICSP header here. And these Picket 3s, they generally come with this uh, connecting jumper, right? You can see if you count these, we have three, uh, six conductors here. And there's only five header pins that causes a little bit of consternation um, but no need to worry right you got the female end of the jumper here we just line it up and hopefully connect it without mashing these pins there we go in Make sure you know which wire you have here on the uh, on the first pin. That's the master clear. We have black because you need on the other end to match it up to connect to the picket three, right? You see the white arrow here on the picket three? That's going to match up with our black wire. Doesn't necessarily need to be black as long as it is matched up with the MCLR. So, white arrow, trace it back, goes to the MCLR connection. Okay. Next thing, we're going to hook this to the computer 
If you've never used it before, you need to uh, put it on your computer, have the Picket 3 recognized, and uh, any kind of driver installed, and then we can proceed. All right, I got a little bit ahead of myself here. Cart before the horse. So what I should have showed you on the back here as well is specifically dealing with our dip 40 you can see a partial outline of the chip you see the little notch here okay that's that's the top end of the chip and we need to align the top end of our chip with this white line here and you flip this thing over and essentially we need to be in the first couple slots here of the zip socket okay release the socket take a look at the the pick there's the pick hopefully you can see this little dot here that indicates the uh, the, the top that's pin one tiny little notch so we're going to align that like that and just lock it down easy okay all right on to programming or I should say loading the hex file that'll be next okay guys what we're gonna do next is open up SP lab X IPE application and this is the application that we utilize in order to load the hex file onto the pick I'll give you the download link for this program I'll put it in my description so here's the window open um, first thing we do is check our device I've already pre-selected this for the device that I'm going to be loading onto but if yours is different then you utilize the drop-down menu you pick your device hit apply uh, next thing would be to look at the tool perhaps you're using a, a picket 2 or a picket 4 um, my picket 3 has already been recognized here so we'll click connect all right we have a, a, a pop-up here is warning us against the possibility of damaging our pick if it were only to be used for uh, with 3.3 volts as opposed to 5 um, we're going to click through that our pick is good for 5 volts and it's communicating with the picket 3 okay could not detect a device all right and the reason it can't detect the device is because you need to uh, enable MP lab IPE to uh, issue power to the device so in order to do that we need to come up here to settings go into advanced mode and as we see here the default password is microchip log in and that opens up this menu over here of, of these buttons we're going to click on power and you need to select this right here so we're going to power target circuit from picket 3 and we're going to indicate a level of 5 volts 
you can drop this down and choose other values and we will see more to that shortly. Go back to the Operate tab. And let's go to Browse. We'll choose our hex file right here. Click Open. Okay, we have the hex file. Now we're going to try to program. So we would click Program. It's looking. Once again, pop up here, warning about the same 5 volt versus 3.3 volts. We will click OK. OK. So if we look down here, we see Picket 3 trying to supply 5 volts from the USB port, but all we're measuring is 4.75 connection failed. So in order to remedy that, we once again go to power settings up here, stay selected, come to the drop down menu, and we're going to choose 4.75 because in this case our pick operates at voltage less than 5 volts. 5 volts and less. I, th I think it goes down to 3.3, .3, I believe. Go back to Operate tab, and we'll try again, Program. And we get the same pop-up here, warning. That's standard. Click OK. Okay, so you can see that uh, programmer to target power is enabled. VDD equals 4.75 volts. Uh, the PIC was found. The device was erased. And the programming was completed. So that's a successful download and programming of our PIC. So I, I hope that was helpful, including kind of a, a, a walkthrough and tour of the various pop-up warnings and error messages that you might encounter when utilizing a PIC3. And on to the next one. Thanks for watching and hopefully thanks for subscribing.